So um, use the electric field generated by point charge kq over r square. This is a common problem I noticed from the solution of the crates. Um, you can't use this equation because the electric field generated by point charge doesn't apply in this case. This equation apply um, to the case um, the point charge. Point charge. So if you have a point charge, for example, you have the point charge, and this charge has a value of Q, and you can treat this charge as a point, and you are going to calculate the electron field um, as another point, for example, P, the point P, and you want to calculate the electric field at the point P generated by the charge Q, then you could use this equation. But in this case, we only know there is a distribution of electric potential. We don't know this potential is generated by a charge or by many charges. So in this case, we can use uh, this equation. Um, actually, uh, we have another equation to calculate the electric field. That's the gradient of the uh, potential. Minus sign is equal to electric field. This is a general formula, general equation to calculate uh, the electric field. Electric field. No matter what, this is a electric field generated by a point or by any object, and they all apply for this equation. And you can see the electric field is a vector, and the gradient is going to give you a vector. And in the math, we can simplify this formula as three derivatives in each direction. So in x direction, that will be minus the derivative of voltage uh, of the potential over the x. Then the direction is little i minus the derivative of the potential over y and the direction is j minus the derivative of potential over z the direction is k okay um, so i j k give you the union vector in x y z direction and the value of the electric field um, is the gradient of the potential in each direction. So we have three components. Any question? Okay, so let's uh, go back to this question. Uh, we know the potential is a function of x. So the potential is independent of y and z. We can simplify this equation as a derivative of x, then the derivative of y of z is equal to zero. So we have minus partial v over partial x in little i direction. Okay, um, we know the uh, expression of v versus x is ax plus b. This is a linear equation, so to do the derivative is very easy. That will be the minus a, okay? Then direction is i, and the a we know is a one volt per meter, so this is minus one volt per meter i, okay? So if we draw a diagram, we have x axis, this is x1, this is x2, and x to x1, and the electric field and uh, x2, the electric field, are all equal to minus one volt per meter. Okay, so minus sign means the electric field go to the uh, opposite direction of x. So electric field goes in this way. This is uh, electric field go to negative x axis 
and we from we calculate the electric field from this formula, we get the electric field is independent of the x. So E is uniform. Maybe right here. Um, e is uniform, is a constant on the x direction. So um, at the x equal to x1 or the x equal to x2, the electric field are equivalent. If you know the electric field, then we can calculate the electric force. We use the equation uh, electrical force equal to the charge times the electric field. The charge is minus one mu coulomb times the electric field is the minus one uh, volt per meter. So the value will be positive one. The unit is mu newton. Okay. Um, if we draw the diagram in the x1, then we will have the force goes to positive direction. This is a force at x1. Okay, then you will find that the direction of the electric field and the direction of the force are interparallel because the charge is minus a charge. This is a negative charge. Okay, the same question, but we are going to calculate the electric force on the charge uh, equal to positive one mu coulomb at x equal to x2. We know the electric field is uniform, so the electric field at x1 equals the electric field at x2. So this is uh, easy. Then the force is the same, Q times E. Q is positive mu coulomb times E, negative one volt per meter, direction is I. Then we have minus one mu newton. Okay, so that means at x2, if we have a positive charge, the direction of the force go to the left, the force and the electric field are parallel. They have the same direction. Okay, then number three and number four, what's the electric field at x equal to one, x1 and x equal to x2? We know the electric field are uniform, so they have the same value, x1 equal to this, x2. And we just get the electric field is negative partial V partial x, that's equal to A, okay? It's a minus one volt per meter. And let's see the direction. The direction we just sketch, um, x1, x2, minus one means the electric field goes to left. Okay. So uh, let me give you a short summary. To calculate the electric field, we have two formula. One is the point charge, the other is a gradient of the potential. So um, how do we pick up the equation? Depends on the description. If we say um, a point charge generates electric field, then we use this equation. But if we don't specify a point charge or any charge object, we use this one. If you know the potential, you have the potential gradient, then we pick up the second equation. Okay, so um, let me take a pause here. Do you have any question? So if not, then move on. Second question um, is uh, a question help you understand the difference of potential and the field. Okay, so first question, what's the electric field in the middle, in the middle between two identical positive point charge? Okay, if we have two positive charge, they have the same value, and what's the electric field in the middle? 
point P. And let's do this. We know they are point charge. So we can use Kuhn's law, electric field equal to the K times the charge over the R square. Okay, and the R is a distance from the charge to the testing point. And the Q is a value of charge. Let me use another Q. Little Q. Okay. So um, let's do this. At the, at the middle, in the middle of these two charges, we know the R from the left is equal to the R on the right. The distance are the same, so the value of electric field are the same. On the left, equal to the electric field on the right. Okay. If the magnitudes are the same, let's check the direction. And the left charge generates electric field to the right. Okay. The right charge generates electric field on the left. So the electric field generated by both charges are interparallel. So electric field on the left is equal to minus electric field on the right. Then we will have um, the total electric field at the middle and is equal to the sum of the electric field generated by each charge that will be equal to electric field on the left plus the electric field on the right. Now we got zero. Okay, so this is very important. If we have two positive charge, then the middle point will have a zero electric field. The same thing, if we have two negative charge in the middle, we also have a neck that we also have a zero electric field. How about the potential? If we check the potential generated by point charge, we know this is equal to KQ over R. Um, the potential is not a vector, so we don't talk about direction of the potential. Then um, to sum up the potential generated by each charge, we just sum up the value. So the left charge give you this value. The right charge gives you the same value because they have the same charge, same constant, and the same distance. So if we are going to calculate the total potential at the middle point, that will be the sum up of the V on the left and the V on the right. Then you will get two times K Q of R. So the potential in the middle is not zero. So that's very important. Then let's move to the next question. If there is two charges and they have the same magnitude but opposite charge, um, what's the electric potential in the middle? Let me sketch a diagram. We have a positive charge on the left, a negative charge on the right. Then in the middle, what's the uh, uh, electric potential? So we use a potential equation generated by point charge. On the left, this guy is going to give you a positive potential. That's K, Q of R. So near the positive charge, the potential is positive. But on the right side, the negative charge will give you a negative potential. So near the negative charge, the potential is negative. In the middle, we sum up the potential generated by each charge. We will have KQ, the positive charge's potential, plus the negative charge's potential. You will get a zero. Okay, so if we uh, sketch a potential line, equal potential line, you will find that the potential near the positive charge is positive. 
on the same circle, the potential are the same. We call it the contour line. And near the negative charge, the potential line are negative. So this is the potential line. And in the middle, the potential is zero. Okay. This is uh, number two. And quick question, what's the electric field at the center? The electric field at the center, um, we use uh, we use this equation. Electric field equal to KQ over R squared, but we have to consider the direction. The left charge generates the electric field rightwards. So the direction goes to the right, and the negative charge generates the electric field also goes to the right. So the electric field at the center is equal to two times kq of r square. Okay, and the direction goes to the right. So do you have any question? If not, um, let me give you a short announcement. I think everybody is here. Um, the announcement is uh, our exam for next week. Next week, um, let me check my calendar. Um, here. Twenty-one and twenty-first, um, at four twenty-five, I believe this time to five twenty-five, and we have the first R exam. Um, it will take uh, one hour uh, to finish the R exam, and uh, this R exam is a closed note. The book and the internet uh, search is forbidden but you can use the equation sheet, okay? The equation sheet is allowed. And you can find the equation sheet on the course site. Do you find the equation sheet? Let me see, equation sheet. Here, under the general topic, you will see, uh, hold on, the equation sheet. equation sheet. So you download the equation sheet and you can also write some notes on the equation sheet. So it's up to you. Mm. Let me move here. Um, so um, one hour, then after 525 and the algorithm is done, then take a picture of your solution convert all the, uh, all the pictures into one PDF file. So only one PDF file. Okay, then upload on the course site. Then we are going to review the grades and spend one week to do the grading. And for the rubrics, we will adjust the rubrics because I know um, we will change the, how we're grading because um, if we find the R exam is too difficult, um, we have to uh, decrease our the standard and give you more points. So the R exam um, will be very tense, and if you cannot um, finish all the questions, just read the description and pick up the question you are confident. And if you don't know how to jump in, and you don't know which equation you're going to use, just skip. And we will give you uh, many questions, and each question have the same credit, but they don't have the same difficulty. So um, I think this is a strategy to do the R exam. Okay, and I also have some uh, announcement about the covering material. So 
go back to the notes. So there will be four questions on the R exam. We have two electric field question, two is about the electric field, and the two is about the magnetic field. Okay. And for the first question, we will ask you to calculate the electric fields generated by point charge. And we may have two charges, three charges at different place, and you're going to sum up all of the electric field generated by each charge. Then you got the total electric field. And when we talk about electric field, this is a vector. So you have to specify the magnitude and the direction. And also we are going to ask you the potential generated by point charge and the total potential of, uh, of different charges and the potential energy. Potential energy for different pair of charges and how to use a potential to calculate the potential energy. So this will be the first question. The second question will be the electric field um, generated by a symmetric uh, geometry object generated by symmetrical um, object something like uh, a ball, um, a cylinder, or a infinite sheet. So and we're going to use Gaussian law to do the calculation and how to calculate the flux and how to use the flux to get the electric field. So that will be the second question. The third question of magnetic field will be a moving charge. If you have a moving charge, um, if you have a current or a current, and then surrounding the moving charge or current, what's the magnetic field distribution? So we're going to calculate the magnetic field by using the equation um, for example, the moving charge will going to generate the magnetic field, and the equation will be a constant times the charge velocity cross um, the vector of R over the distance square. And also for the current, the magnetic field is equal to uh, a constant times the current over the, the distance. So these are the uh, common problems for the first R exam. And the fourth problem I will talk mm -hmm. on the Friday, we are going to use the torque and the force generated by magnetic field. By magnetic field uh, on a loop. So if we have a magnetic field, something like this, and there is a loop, inside the magnetic field, then um, does, the, field, does the, the loop, the circle, wire circle, uh, has any force on site or is there any torque on the, on the loop? So this will be um, the first problem and I will spend some time talking this on Friday. So today, um, my, a, my plan is going to talk about this one. If we have a current, how to calculate the magnetic field generated by a current? So, oh, here. Um, let's go back to the Mustin physics. The Mustin physics, we have a question. This is the Mustin physics due yesterday. And number seven, I think this is a typical question in the R exam, um, there are two current. It's the current I, and they have a different direction. 
you see uh, there is a dot, there's a cross. So this is a notation of direction in 3D. Because this is a plane, we cannot um, draw a 3D direction in a plane. But if you see a dot, that means the direction of the current is going outward, goes outward. So that means it's towards you. If you have a cross, then it's going to inward. And that means towards the, the paper or towards the table. So the, the cross goes in, the dot goes out. And if we have current, then the current is going to generate electromagnetic fields around the space. And uh, we are going to calculate the magnetic field and at different places, point A, point B, and point C. So how to do the, this problem? We go back to the, the note, and I tell you how we define the current. So what's a current? Mm, we know if we have a moving charge, go to change another color. If we have a moving charge and with the speed, and this moving charge generates um, a magnetic field around this charge. And if we're going to test this point, point P, what's the magnetic field at point P? We just connect this two point, and we will get a distance vector R. Then we have a magnetic field generated by a moving charge is equal to this. So this is a magnetic field generated by a point charge. If we have uh, many point charge, a series of point charge, and the moving in a cable with a constant direction. So the direction is a constant. And they have the speed Then we say in this cable, there is a constant current. There is current in the cable. So cable is, uh, the current is a series of charges moving um, in the same direction in a cable. Then we use capital I to represent the current. And the direction of the current is the moving direction of positive charge. Direction is the moving direction. Of a positive charge. So if you have a negative charge, then the direction is opposite direction. Okay. Then how to quantify the current? We draw a cross section on the cable. Then we use a timer to count how many charges moving through this cross section in a second. So in a second or in a time interval, how many charges uh, moving through the cross section. Then we define the current is the flow rate of the charge. So we use charge over the time. So uh, if in one second, there are four coulomb of charge moving through the uh, cross section, then the current is four coulomb per second. If you have five coulomb, then that will be five coulomb per second. So um, in this case, we define the current. This is a uh, charge rate. 
Uh, also, we want to uh, give credit to Ampere, Ampere, a French physicist, um, derived Ampere's law and the magnetic field generated by a cable. So to give credit to this guy, we use his name to name the unit of the current. So one ampere is equal to one coulomb per second. So when we talk about the current, we use ampere as the unit. Okay. This unit uh, is going to memorize uh, the ampere. Okay, then let's see if the moving charge can generate electric uh, magnetic field, then the current could also generate magnetic field. So if we have a current moving upward, then around this cable, there will be magnetic field. The magnetic field goes clock, uh, counterclockwise in the space counterclockwise. And if you have a cable and the direction of current move downward, then the direction of magnetic field is clockwise. Then how to memorize the clockwise? We use right hand row. We have right hand row so what's that? I show the picture. Um, picture, picture, here. Ooh. Okay, you see, um, hold on. I change the color. Oh, here. Um, so we use the right hand to hold the cable. Press one. Um, Use the right hand, hold the cable, and the direction of thumb is the direction of the current. The direction of the thumb is the direction of the current. So they are parallel. And the direction of your forefinger curling in this way, so the magnetic field curling is surrounding this cable in the same direction. So, because your forefinger is counterclockwise, the magnetic field surrounding this cable is also counterclockwise. So, this is a very easy way to determine the direction of the current. First step. Right, uh, use your right hand to hold the cable. Second, uh, the direction of thumb uh, towards the direction of the current. Then the direction of your four fingers is the direction of magnetic field. Okay, so this is how we determine the magnetic field. Let's go back here. And if we know the direction, the direction, of current apply to the right hand row, then magnetic uh, magnitude of the magnetic field, this is the magnetic direction of magnetic field, and could be um, confirmed by the experiment that will be proportional to the one over R. Um, so we have to be careful. This is not one over r squared. Okay. So the magnetic field generated by a very long current is proportional to the one over r, and the expression is equal to mu naught i over two pi r. Okay, this is the uh, expression of magnetic field generated by a very long cable. Then let's go back to mustard physics. 
So let's calculate the magnetic field at a different position. Okay, so in, at the point A, at the point A here, let's calculate the magnetic field. So the magnetic field generated by uh, the first current, we use right hand row to determine the direction. The sun goes towards you. So my four finger is in the counterclockwise. So the direction of the magnetic field is in this way. Because the magnetic field is a circle and counterclockwise, the tangential direction will be goes uh, right down. Okay, there's a magnetic field generated by the first current. The second current generates the same magnetic field, but because the direction of current goes inside, so it goes to clockwise. Magnetic field goes to clockwise. Then at point A, and magnetic field in this way, magnetic field in this way. So we have to sum up these two magnetic fields. They will go in this way. This is total. Okay, then let's calculate uh, the magnitude. This is a 45 degree. This is also 45 degree. And B1 and B2 share the same magnitude because they have the same current, they have the same distance. So B1 equal to B2 equal to the mu non i over 2 pi distance. The distance here will be uh, square root 2 centimeter. Okay. So the current, let me see what's how large is the current. The current is 9 ampere. Nine ampere. So mu nan is four pi times ten to negative seven over two pi square root two centimeter times ten to the negative two. The current is nine ampere. Okay, this is a result, and the magnetic field unit is Tesla. We use this one. So this is a magnetic field at point A. Let's go to point B. The point B, same thing. Uh, the first current give us a, a counterclockwise direction in this way, and the second current give us a clockwise. So it also goes to the same direction. So the magnetic field at the point B is two times of each magnetic field generated by um, B1, B2, B1, B2. Okay, B1 will be equal to two times mu non i over the two pi distance. Distance is one centimeter. Okay, this is uh, um, point B. At the point C, um, same idea as the point A. So you can uh, just draw the circle at the point C, determine the direction of the magnetic field, then do the uh, calculation. Okay. This is um, for, yeah. for part A. Mm -hmm. um, why did you not? like multiply it by like sine of 45 um, to indicate like that it was just like the X component okay. of the Hold magnetic on. field. Uh, yeah, let me go back here. This gives the electric field, uh, magnetic field in this way, this goes with magnetic field in this way. And just now I calculate the B1, this will be equal to mu non i 
2 pi square root 2 centimeter, right? This is a magnetic field generated by this one. And right. because it is a 45 degree, so um, the sum of these two vector will be square root 2 times the B1. Okay, so this is the total. Okay. Yeah. Any other question? Okay. If not, let me go to the Ampere's law. So we're going to do the integral, a line integral of the current. So if we have a current in this way, then the magnetic field is counterclockwise. So if we look from the top, then we have the current in this way, and we will have a circular magnetic field. And if we do a line integral of each circle, we sketch a circle, and a line integral, integral is equal to a closed circle magnetic field times the DL. And if this sketch a circle, the green circle had the same center of the current, then the on this circle magnetic field share the same magnitude. So in this case, this line integral could be simplified as the magnitude of the magnetic field multiply by the circumference of the circle, 2 pi r. This is r. And then we know the magnetic field generated by the cable, this current is equal to mu naught i over 2 pi r. So this multiplied 2 pi r, we will get a constant. That means if we have a current, this current generates magnetic field in the space and we sketch a circle. This circle is close to the loop and we do the integral. This integral is independent of the radius. If you still remember how we de uh, derive the Gaussian, Gaussian's law, we have a surface integral. We sketch a closed surface and the flux is the electrical field times the surface area. This is independent of the radius. It only depends on the charge included in the closed surface over a constant. Or you can use 4 pi k q. And the same thing, if we have a current, and this current is included by a closed circle, and we do the line integral, of this closed circle, then this integral is independent of the radius. It only depends on the current included into this circle multiply a constant. Okay, so this is very important because if we don't know the magnetic field, we can use this result to help us do the calculation because the line integral could be equal to the magnetic field times by the uh, circumference. Then this is equal to a constant. Then the magnetic field could be uh, solved by using the constant over the circumference. Okay, so this is a very important uh, conclusion. If we have a symmetrical uh, geometry, and for example, you have a, a line, and this line is a current, has a current flowing inside the wire, and you can sketch a circle, and these circles give you uh, a constant magnetic field outside, 
then you do the integral, the line integral, you will get a, a constant mu naught times i, then you use mu naught times i over the circumference of the circle, then you get the magnetic field. So this will be a question in the motion physics. I show you this one and number 10. Number 10, um, there is a very long hollow wire. Long hollow wire, and the hollow has an R1, R2, so something like this. Inner uh, radius is R1, outer uh, radius is R2, and inside is a hollow, so the current flow in this cylinder. Okay, then we are going to calculate the magnetic field at um, in the hollow, outside the, the wire, and the inside the wire. We use Ampere's law to do the calculation to here. Um, this is the solution. So if we look from the top, we have the hollow, this is R1, this is R2. And the current, suppose, uh, inside of the paper. And I think the most easier one is to calculate the, the magnetic field outside the wire. The R here. And we can sketch a, a circle. This circle shares the same center with the wire. So, then according to Ampere's law, we have the line integral, line integral equal to the magnetic field times uh, circumference of the circle, that will be 2 pi r, equal to a constant mu naught times the current. Current is, uh, uh, is included by the circle. And we know the total current is i. So here we use I. Then the magnetic field on the black circle will be the mu naught I over 2 pi R. Here R larger than R2. This is the magnetic field on all sides of the wire. Then if we are going to calculate the magnetic field inside the wire, the same thing, we sketch a loop, a closed circle, and inside the circle, the current is zero. There's no current in the circle. So we get a line integral equal to zero. The magnetic field inside the hollow is zero. Okay, if we are going to calculate the magnetic field inside the wire, we sketch a, a black circle and we still use the same equation, magnetic field times 2 pi r equal to mu naught i. But the current is not the total current because it only includes this part. This portion of the cylinder only have a small portion of the current. So we use the total current divided by the total surface area of the cross section that will be pi capital R2 square minus pi capital R1 square. This is a total uh, cross-section area. And the numerator will be the uh, area of the small circle we sketch minus the area of the hollow. Okay, this is the current inside the black circle. Okay. Then we divide by the 2 pi r, we get a magnetic field. So this is how we use Ampere's law to do the calculation. So I think we need to do more practice and to um, apply the Ampere's law um, in, the, in the problem. Okay, so this is what I'm talking today. Do you have any other questions?